Okay, so this is part two of your uh, your pseudocode building blocks uh, tutorial. Uh, I want to go over the the conditional and selection control structures that I didn't get a chance to in the other uh, in the other part. Um, but but basically, your selection control structure is all uh, they're all based off this keyword uh, if if then right uh, and and if then. It's it's basically a logical statement that uses uh, uses a conditional statement within it uh, to evaluate it and figure out um, if the evaluation is true, then it does uh, one per one particular set of logic. If the evaluation is false, uh, then it will do uh, another set of logic. And this this works uh, very much like. Uh, like the way we think uh, on an everyday basis, right? So when we have a thought process and then we kind of uh, go from our day-to-day -day activities, our thought process is typically very, uh, very sequential and one thought leads to the next, but then we get to a thought where uh, we must evaluate a condition before we can really get to that next thought, right? <laughs> uh, for example, am I, am I hungry? Right, and if the answer is yes, then you know I want to go to uh, Wendy's. Yeah, you know if the answer is no, um, then you know you're gonna you're gonna look for something else to think about, right? So uh, so this if then logic enables you to create some some really complex uh, programs that can have you know more than just one uh, one flow, right? Because up until now, without these these conditional or these selection uh, control structures, uh, your programs could only be very simple, and they were basically uh, just very very sequential, uh, very step by step oriented, and and they could never really break outside the box, right? So with these conditional control structures, now all of a sudden you can say, well, if this condition is met, then do this; if not, then do this, uh, and your programs can become much more complex. Okay. So with that said, these if statements. Uh, you need to have an end tag associated with them because the compiler needs to know okay I'm looking at an if statement when does this if statement end right otherwise you could have if statements that are that are leading into other if statements that are leading into other if statements and things get really messy so so with these if statements you uh, an end tag there's also this this keyword called else uh, that that is optional with these if statements um, else is else is used whenever the uh, conditional statement uh, evaluates to false. Okay, and and you're going to see what I'm what I'm talking about in these examples below. Uh, this conditional statement that I keep harping on, uh, conditional statements use what's called a relational operator. Okay, uh, and and these relational operators, um, there's 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 only a few of them, and and I've listed them here. There's about six of them, six basic ones uh, that, that you use on you know, an every everyday day to day basis, right? Uh, this first one is equals to. Um, if you want to figure out uh, if a variable is equal to, uh, for example, am I hungry, right? Answer in my head is yes, right? Then we do something. If it's equal to no, then we do something else. Um, the other, the other, so this is probably the one that's used the most often is, is taking a uh, a data variable and just comparing it to a value uh, and if the value is what you expect then you do you know one particular set of logic if it's not uh, then you do an alternate set of logic but the other things you can do and and these come in handy for uh, for numeric values as you can check to see is a number less than a particular value right less than here is a number greater than a particular value right so so all of these Relational operators are relational because they can give back a true or false answer. Okay, so if your conditional, if you look at your conditional statement, because uh, I because I've seen uh, some of your pseudocode and I've seen uh, people use if yes, then do this. Uh, well, the the problem is is the computer has no idea what is supposed to be yes. It has no idea which uh, memory location it's supposed to look at. Uh, to see if if it's equal to the value yes right so what you need to include is a variable name the conditional operator and then or I'm sorry the relational operator and then the condition uh, that you're looking for okay so let's, let's look at a few examples uh, for the first example we're using the if statement 
uh, and here is your your conditional statement right this statement here can be evaluated to true and it can be evaluated to false it just depends on uh, what the number of burgers is equal to right if the number of burgers is large let's say it's 20 uh, then this is going to evaluate to true when this conditional statement evaluates to true it executes the the next the next line immediately uh, after this if statement okay so the true logic the, the true condition is always immediately uh, after the if statement it's immediately after this then okay um, if you want to have logic that's executed uh, let's say for the for a false condition right that's why I provide this uh, the second example here so if the book name is equal to IT 193 so if this evaluates the true remember this conditional statement must always be uh, able to be evaluated to either true or false uh, and depending on what book name is set to it can evaluate to true sometimes and it can evaluate to false sometimes if this evaluates to true then it's going to execute the true logic which is immediately after the if then logic okay and that's and we're going to display that's a cool class right if this evaluates to false let's say the book name is uh, I don't know uh, uh, IT 1008 um, then it's going to wait uh, whatever is in whatever precedes the else right or excuse me what is that whatever follows the else statement all of this logic is going to be uh, executed for false so you have the true flow which is right after the if and you have a uh, a false flow which is right after the the else uh, now the question is well what if you don't have an else right and what if this evaluates to false number of, let's say number of burgers is equal to eight uh, is eight greater than ten no that's false right but there's no else statement here right there's no there's no false logic so so what happens here uh, basically the computer just skips over it goes to the end if and continues executing the program so if there's no else logic uh, the computer just skips over uh, if, 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 if it evaluates to false and there's no else logic it'll just skip over uh, all the code that is within that if statement okay and then for the third example you, it's kind of a hybrid of, of if and the else so what you can do is, is you can test for the true condition here and then you can say well if this evaluates the false I also want you to do so this that's why the else comes in handy here if this evaluates the false right then I also also want you to look and see if you can find this name instead right if this evaluates the false right because we have an else statement here it's going to execute this right uh, and 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 so this else if comes in handy in that you know we could have create we could have used multiple if statements here to do the same thing but let's say this evaluated to true uh, then it would go ahead and basically evaluate all the additional if statements um, below it and it's not very uh, efficient and sometimes that's, that's you don't want that kind of logic you want very specific logic if it's this then do this else if it's this then do this but there may be other other um, conditions where you wanna you wanna check for both things you, you don't want this else else statement and and that's that's completely fine too um, but the majority of time you're gonna you're gonna be using uh, the majority of time I think for most of your assignments you're gonna be using uh, one of these two examples um, and and that's yeah that's the that's the conditional and and selection control structures okay so I've got a few minutes I've got about five minutes left let me let me do the iterative uh, control structures here okay so so here I, I think we're gonna get into this uh, during week four and to tell you the truth uh, the the only the only time you really use these these looping structures uh, is when you have more complex applications that are actually uh, reading data in let's say from a file from the internet uh, and in processing all this data and in outputting a lot of data that that's where these loops um, come in really really handy uh, and since uh, the majority of, of your assignments uh, don't really do this I don't I don't think you're going to use uh, these iterative control structures that much except for you know during week four uh, which is where we actually really explore 
uh, explore these iterative control structures. Okay, but let's just let's just kind of quickly go over them. Uh, so so the first one is a do while loop, and this is what's called a post test loop. Uh, and 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 you know in your book it, they call it a repeat until loop. But the problem is is I don't in the real world most comp most most compilers don't use until. Uh, so that's why I like to call this a do while loop uh, because almost uh, all, all programming languages out there uh, use what's called do while and I want to get you guys used to this terminology. So what does a do while loop do? Well it, it's kind of like a module in that it, it declares the top of, of the code that that's supposed to be uh, looped over and executed again and again with this keyword do. So this, this keyword do up here tells the compiler, okay, this is where my loop starts. Uh, then once you've declared your do, you can go in and say, okay, I want you to loop over, uh, you know, whatever the logic is uh, that you want to put in there. Uh, and in this in this example, I'm, I'm asking the user, do you want to loop again, right? And then we uh, we input, we, 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 we put the user's input into this, this variable called user choice. And what we're doing is, is we're looping until the user basically types in uh, no, or he could type in bananas. But if he types in yes, it's basically going to come back to the top of the loop and execute this loop again. So this do while loop uses very much like the if statement a conditional statement. Okay, this has to be able to be evaluated to true or false. Okay, so just know that sometimes this can be true, sometimes this can be false. It just depends on what this variable is set to. Um, but it doesn't evaluate this conditional statement until the end of the loop. Okay, that's the do while loop. Your while loop, on the other hand, is what's called a pretest loop. So, for for this, it's, it's similar to the do while loop. Only, you look at the condition before you run the loop. So, if we have uh, this count variable that we declared before this, and let's say we just set it to twenty before this this do while loop uh, is ever run, it's gonna it's gonna evaluate is twenty less than ten, and the answer is no, it's false. So it's going to do like the if statement and just completely jump over all the code that's within that while loop. Okay, count is less than 10. If this evaluates to true, then now it's going to go ahead and evaluate all the code uh, that's within that while loop. Okay, so let's say counts one. One's going to come in here and increment it to two. Right, it's going to go back around and loop again. Is two less than 10? Yes. It's going to come back in here and loop and increment it to three, and so on until count is finally equal to 10. Right, 10 is not less than 10, and now all of a sudden uh, it jumps outside the loop, and that's what's called a, a counter-controlled loop. Um, but you know, it doesn't have to be a counter. You can you can use a string uh, like we did above here. Uh, but the key to this loop is the condition is checked at the beginning of the loop and not at the end of the loop, like this one. Okay. Last but not least is this for next loop, uh, and and this is kind of what what they call a built-in counter-controlled loop. Uh, so, so what this enables you to do is to take a variable that you've declared, start it at a particular number, right? Normally one, and then you tell it what number you want it to iterate to. Uh, in this case, I'm picking four. Okay, and there's this other keyword that's used with this for loop. Okay, these are very specific parameters that I that I want 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 you guys to be. Uh, to get used to when you're when you're creating a pseudocode is I want these commands to look like this, okay? Because otherwise the compiler has no idea what you're putting in. So first is the variable name. Second is what number to start with. Third is what number are you going to go to? And then fourth is okay. How how do you want to increment through these numbers? Uh, and typically you almost always increment by one. Um, you know if there's a special condition and you want to go by three, like I do down here. Uh, that's fine, but you can see the difference between stepping by one and stepping by three. Uh, you know, this is going to be the output for one, and this is going to be the output for three. Okay, so this is just kind of a way to to create a loop uh, that counts automatically. Okay, well, I hope that uh, that clears some things up. I know I went over a lot of things really quickly, uh, but that's okay because this is a a video that's been uploaded. You guys can pause and kind of kind of look at this stuff and and take it all in. And then if you still have questions, feel free to email me and let me know which part you don't understand, and I'll see if I can clarify it. Okay, thanks, guys.